toes. Or round, uh, round worms. Uh, what, uh, if one looks at the epidemiology of it, Ascaris is very, very common. That's um, often referred to the round worm. Okay, uh, GI tract infection, and it can cause pulmonary uh, pulmonary symptoms as well. And you will see the reason when we come to life cycle of the organisms. Trichinosis or trichinosis virulis causes trichinosis. It affects the GI tract and muscles, and it's also worldwide as well as in this, uh, you know, it is found in this country as well. Trichinosis, that's the 500 times 10 to the 6. 6 is missing there. Um, again, it's the GI tract uh, can cause severe um, anemia. Uh, Entromib, Entrobius vermicularis, also known as pinworm, um, anal pruritus it causes worldwide, not uncommon in this country. Uh, those who have got children at nursery age they, or the uh, grade school age, elementary school age, they have often uh, they have, they've seen the infection. Um, the strongyloidus, um, lung and skin is prevalent worldwide, uh, about 100 million cases worldwide. Uh, the um, hookworm, Nicada americanus, and there is another one, Ankylostoma uh, duodenali, and they both are cause GI uh, symptoms as well as lung uh, symptoms. And uh, because they result in blood loss, they cause uh, severe anemia. Uh, is, um, the ankylostoma duodenale is also refers to as old world hookworm, whereas um, strong uh, Nicada americanus is the new world hookworm. Um, disease they cause is the same. We'll talk about what the symptoms are. Then there's some more exotic, Dracanculus uh, marinensis, uh, um, uh, is um, guinea worm, is the common name. It affects the skin, Asia, Africa, um, South America, it is found in. Um, it, there has been a big drive to eliminate that because they. And, uh, the water is the reservoir for these, and um, there has been some success in eliminating this organism. Toxicara can uh, it, uh, is the uh, it's a zoonotic um, infection. The dogs and uh, cats can be the carriers, but humans are occasional victims, and it affects the skin and the eye. Uh, Wuchereria bancrofti or filarial worm, uh, blood filariae, um, causes elephantiasis. It is prevalent worldwide. Often one, one often sees cases of these in Asia. Oncocerca volvulus, very common in parts of Africa. As a matter of fact, it's a major cause of blindness in parts of Africa. And it affects the um, skin and eye um, penetration this infection occurs in the skin. That's where the symptoms are. And later it can migrate to the eye and causes blindness. The similar organism, Loa Loa, it is, um, again, worldwide. The incidence, the actual the numbers, is, I have not been able to find. It causes symptoms very similar, very, very similar to onchocerciasis. As a matter of fact, the symptoms are the same, eye and skin involvement. Uh, the only difference is that the vector is totally different. And we'll see that what they are. OK, uh, if one look is looking for Ascaris or hookworm or trochurus or pinworm, and there, are two, there have been two studies published in South Carolina, several thousand cases of Ascaris in one study, and uh, in the study fewer. But then the, the infection is not reportable. 
So it is a very active interest of investigators that they go around and seeing what the incidence is. But it is very common in the low country. Hookworm infection, um, the two studies, uh, one reported a lot more cases than the others. Uh, there has not been any recent study on any of them. Pinworm, indeterminate number, as I said, is a very, very common infection. Uh, a number of, um, in the, uh, of you in the class, if they had uh, uh, the uh, school age or preschool age children going to nursery and, or grade school, um, they, some of them have observed that infection in their um, offspring. Okay, one general rule about the helminthic infections and some other parasitic infections, particularly those that are orofecal, giardiasis, amoebiasis, or other things, this particular rule will apply in that particular scenario beach or anywhere else, or, uh, uh, and the, the rule is um, if you do not follow good practice, good health rule, you will swallow uh, worm eggs, and a family of worms will come and live with you or inside you. The organism, the size-wise, they are from um, half a centimeter to all the way to um, half a millimeter all the way to our millimeter actually or less uh, millimeter or less all the way to about 30 millimeters in length the roundworms okay so um, that's uh, Ascaris trichuris is the next one uh, ankylostoma and uh, cater is a little bit smaller even smaller than that Entrobius is here um, uh, Trochanola spiralis and strangulitis. So the, they come in a variety of sizes. All right, individually talking about these worms, Oscaris is the um, most common one. Geographical distribution, as you can see, uh, developing or underdeveloped countries uh, have a much higher incidence of. Um, the Ascariasis disease. Okay, um, you can see that in Africa there are certain areas that there is much lower uh, incidence than others. They have got much more. No, no. no. Um, general morphology, as you can see on the scale here, they are fairly large roundworms. They almost are like um, earthworms. Okay, and um, earthworm-like lumbricoides uh, translates into earthworm-like organism. Um, the scenario, very similar to what you saw for um, um, amoebiasis, okay, infected vegetation. Or water, it could be water as well. But, uh, and the vegetables are often grown with um, untreated sewage as fertilizer and uh, irrigation. And the organisms are in those. And this is, a, uh, as you can see, this is a fertilized egg. And there's a worm inside. It is consumed together with food. The uh, organism will desist in the GI tract. The larvae, small larvae that are produced, they penetrate the gut mucosa, okay? And from gut mucosa, after penetration, they will go into hepatic circulation to the liver, and um, from there, they, as they migrate, they are getting a little bit larger as well. Those um, organisms, uh, they enter the pulmonary circulation, from there they can migrate out into alveoli and the bronchial um, tract, uh, okay? Uh, and uh, the irritation causes coughing, the patient coughs, and particularly during the night, if it is they're asleep, they swallow the 
whatever exudate is produced and worm included in them and the young worm, larval worm, is going to now uh, pen, uh, you know, lodge itself in the GI tract and uh, they uh, produce hundreds of thousands of eggs and those eggs are, come out, are extruded in the fecal material and the cycle continues if that fecal material is not disposed of properly. It will find its uh, way to food items again. Um, Self-infection is possible. Not properly washing hands uh, after being in contact with the fecal material. Okay, here is this sort of uh, track I have just described swallowing and then coming and lodging itself in the, all over the intestine and uh, producing eggs being extruded in the fecal material. Symptoms of Ascaris, again, depends on where the worm is. The organs involved are the GI, small and large intestine, GI tract, abdominal pain, distended abdomen, okay, and um, uh, associated with weight loss and anorexia, um, um, the, there's occasional vomiting if the, if the worm is, when the worm is just coming out of the bronchial tissue and uh, being swallowed. And uh, occasion, you know, it will go into cycles of constipation and lose stool. Nothing very, symptoms are very, very, very mild. One or two worms, they can live happily without causing too much problems, the individual not noticing that they are harboring a worm, being a good, good host, but the heavier infections can cause um, more, severe, uh, uh, more severe symptoms. Pulmonary, when they are in the respiratory tract, they are obviously going to cause irritation uh, and they will cause cause cough, wheezing, shortness of breath, and substernal discomfort. So those are all due to the presence of the worm in that particular area. Here is a heavily infected um, child uh, with distended abdomen. And here is an autopsy sample with a, in an intestinal tract full of worm. Now you know why it will cause blockage. Okay. Yes. How fast do they grow from the water? Oh, gosh, gosh, that's a good question. I think it's about 10 to 12 days that they are in circulation and then cough back. Okay. They can get that big as they're, yeah, yeah, as they grow. And many, many years they can, you know, uh, live several years. Okay. Yes. No, as they differentiate, they, they, you saw the egg had a larval, you know, very small. Obviously, it desists it, uh, in, a, in the upper intestinal tract, past the stomach, and when it comes out, it can penetrate the gut mucosa. And from there, it will migrate into circulation, to the liver circulation, to pulmonary circulation, and from there into the come out into the trachea and, uh, you know, into the lung tissue and lung spaces. And then cause, the irritation will cause it to be coughed up and be swallowed again. And as it migrates, it is growing in size slowly. So the worm uh, it can be the different sizes that are coughed up. They can be like a small earthworm or much smaller. Okay? And then when they are swallowed back, that's when they go into the GI tract and then they just anchor themselves, not just because of the size, the way they are curling, they, there's no penetration and they don't bite into the mucosa. Okay? Just they lodge themselves as if, you know, you put something coil in a tube. Okay? Uh, the diagnosis is based on symptoms. Okay, intermittent 
chronic GI problems, um, and the presence of um, very typical uh, A. Um, typically, it has got a cortex, okay, uh, and um, the cortical layer outside, and then internal, some internal structure. And if you, you know, happen to find one egg that is more differentiated, the, the larva is a fertilized egg, uh, you may even see the curled up larvae in them. So occasionally you will see eggs that are not, no internal structure, as you can see, and these are unfertilized eggs. They are, will obviously not be uh, producing the worm, not be infectious. Uh, prevention and treatment, um, good hygiene is a good way of preventing. If one suspects uh, anyone having uh, treatment and then, um, you know, with mebendazole uh, would be effective. It's easily treatable. As I said, that there are a limited number of drugs that are used, mebendazole or derivatives of this azole compound are used for most of the helminthic infections. The, it will, the worms will be killed and they will be excreted. Okay. I'm sorry? The, the, the egg is resistant to the stomach acid. The question was, are these um, worms resistant to stomach acids? The worms now are, you know, in this uh, very transiently, only when they are coughed up and then, okay, swallowed back. But the egg, the cortex protects the egg from stomach acids. <coughs> okay. So that the treatment, no reason to produce any vaccine. It's not, a lethal, it's not a fatal infection. Very rarely it will be fatal. Uh, once one recognizes it, it can be easily treated. Trichinosis. Trichinella spirulis is the organism. The pork meat is particularly uh, maligned with that related to farming conditions. If they are hygienic conditions, it will not be infected with trichinella and it will be safe, but uh, there are many countries where the pork is often um, contaminated and infected with trichinella. In this country, if one looks at the epidemiology, about 20 to 30, well, anywhere from five to 20 cases every year. This year, there were 11 cases reported, uh, 11 cases of trichinosis. Um, typical scenario, I didn't give one for the other. I'll have to make up one, some cases there too. Um, a 54-year-old uh, who, uh, who resided in Franklin County, uh, the patient had been hospitalized three weeks. This is not a made up, this is actual case. Uh, uh, history of diaphoresis, uh, fever, weakness, tachycardia, um, diarrhea, and eight pound weight loss, very sort of um, uh, acute weight loss there. Um, again, a dry cough also. Laboratory testing indicated an elevated white blood cell uh, count, mostly eosinophil. So in worm infections, helminthic infection, eosinophilia is going to be a common uh, threat. Okay, for all worm infections. So you might as well note that um, as opposed to neutrophils and bacterial infections, most bacterial infections, um, eosinophils are in this case. Um, elevated lactate dehydrogenase and elevated um, creatine phosphokinase, that's due to damage to the t muscle. Uh, muscular tissue. The patient reported eating two pounds of nearly raw bear meat during several meals two weeks earlier. During the oh, couple, give him a, a break, couple of days. 
<laughs> he was not a glutton. But that was a good kill. He had, a, uh, you know, hunted a bear. And this is the uh, real case that was reported uh, uh, in MMWR. Because of suspicion of trichinosis, why t- suspicion? Because of the, because of eosinophilia and history of eating that uh, meat. Trichinosis, uh, 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 albendazole, another derivative of uh, azole compound, um, and uh, corticosteroids were administered, and the patient recovered fully by February 2004. So it's a 2004 case. Okay, another one. 38 year old woman, where aged 54 years, uh, aged 54 years were uh, uh, okay, both man and woman. Yeah, there should be a man here. Um, admitted to a hospital with seven days um, and 14 days histories of fever, respectively, uh, chills, headache, uh, myalgia, arthralgia, uh, and facial swelling. Edema is a very common feature of trichinosis. trichinosis. Uh, the man's WBC count was um, 14,000, over 14,000, with 24% eosinophils. That's way up there. It's one to, you know, one to two percent, normally or less. Thirteen uh, percent lymphocytes, the number of lymphocytes is reduced, and two percent monocytes. The woman's uh, WBC count was also uh, also showed eosinophilia. Um, serum obtained from both patients has positive for trichinella antibodies. There are antigens available when which one can use to detect antibodies uh, against the organisms. Uh, antigens. Uh, both were started on course of albendazole and corticosteroid. Both patients have recovered fully. It's not a particularly lethal disease. Okay. Questioning of patients revealed that uh, the man had uh, shot a black bear in Canada. The bear was um, field dressed and um, selected meat was packed on ice for transportation to Tennessee. This was in Tennessee. Uh, This case uh, was reported from there. The wife prepared and cooked the bear meat on an outdoor grill for themselves and for other persons. The man and woman ate their steaks medium rare. The four others um, ate their steaks well done. The meat was examined examined um, histologically, they're left over in the freezer, uh, and numerous trichinella larvae were observed and assisted in um, characteristic hyalinized capsule in the striated muscle. You'll see that uh, example of that a little later. Here it is. Okay, here is a um, trichinella spiralis um, cyst. It sort of is, um, if the worm is dead, and they, or there is no larvae in there, they get sort of um, insisted like this, and um, they um, disintegrate. Even that disintegration causes inflammatory reaction, mostly IgE type reaction. Uh, here is the picture of the, um, the organism, and um, you can see Un- un- uninsisted organism here, and here are insisted organisms. And see, the, look, at is the spiral shape, the uh, anterior end, that is the spiral shape that is, uh, okay. The life cycle, the reservoir are a variety of wild animals, most all of them carnivores, and they transmit it from each other as their raw meat is consumed, and occasionally humans are uh, the victims. Humans, again, just like um, uh, toxoplasma, unless they are eaten by another human being or by another uninfected bear, they are the dead-end hosts. The symptoms are due to inflammatory response to the organism. Intestinal mucosa, they will, you know, the, the, when the cyst 
is taken in by the uh, human uh, being and uh, it will, the, the larvae will come out, uh, it will produce nausea, vomiting, uh, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Those are the acute symptoms, but then, of course, the organism is going to go into circulation, penetration into the mucosa, into circulation to migrate to different tissues. It will produce edema, periorbital conjunctivitis, photophobia, chills, fever, sweating, muscle pain, spasm, and the CBC will reflect eosinophilia. Here is a typical example of um, edema. Myocardium, if it is in the uh, heart tissue, it's going to uh, cause chest pain, tachycardia, edema, vascular thrombosis, edema being the common um, feature for all of the organs. In the brain, headache, uh, supraorbital headache, um, vertigo, tinnitus, ring of the ears, deafness, mental apathy, delirium, coma, and loss of uh, reflexes in the um, more severe cases. So the, 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 the symptoms are due to presence of organ, huh? presence of uh, the organism. Yes, um, come. Uh, the organism in those particular tissues. Yes. It can migrate through the if it, when it's going through the circulation, it can enter any part of the body. By penetration, the, the, the usually the muscle, okay, usually the muscle, but this by penetration, it can come out of the blood vessel to any tissue it happens to be at that time. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, just finishing with the diagnosis again. Diagnosis was those typical conditions, the history of either cooking. A ah, typical scenario, I'm traveling in one of the underdeveloped countries or um, developing countries. Uh, the hog farming is not very hygienic, not very controlled, not very regulated. We have got meat, our meat inspected, okay, and um, the farms are much more organized and hygienic. There, the animals are left to graze outside. They can eat whatever. Uh, the pigs are omnivorous. So, you know, and then coming back, I get the, the GI symptoms first, and then edema and uh, muscle weakness, and that would be characteristic for diagnosis of trichinosis. Um, uh, recent history of eating undercooked pork or other meat, seal or... Um, Bear, you saw? Okay, eosinophilia would be a characteristic feature. Um, increased serum creatinine because of the uh, damage to the muscle. Um, uh, serologically, one can detect antibodies. Um, treatment is corticosteroid and symptomatic for um, other symptoms because of the uh, presence of the organism or the release of specific special cytokines. Mebendazole will kill the worm, and prevention is elimination of parasites from the, um, from the hogs. Okay, here is the incidence of uh, over many years in the United States. Number of cases, anywhere from over 200 to now is reduced in the last uh, 10, 13 years. 10 to 15 years, um, much, much lower incidence. And that is because of the careful uh, modification of farming procedures. Okay, tropical, um, okay. That's then another one worm. We will leave that till tomorrow.